My castle? What has happened? Tell you what happened? What? Ooh, I know what happened to your castle. I saw it all. Yes, I did. You did? Well then, what happened? Ooh, it was the powerful and evil wizard Mordak who did it. Ooh, I just happened to be visiting with an old friend when I saw him materialize out of thin air. Thank goodness he didn't notice me. Well, don't stop now. Go on. He conjured up a terrible whirlwind that swirled faster and faster around the castle. With another incantation, Mordak then caused the wind to draw the castle up into the sky and out of sight. Ooh, it was something to see, all right. Why? Why would this wizard, Mordak, want my castle? What could he have against me and my family? That I don't know. Ooh, I only know that it was Mordak who took your castle and your family. Well, perhaps I can help you. My employer also happens to be a wizard, which is why I recognized Mordak. Ooh, unlike Mordak, though, my employer is a very good wizard. His name is Crispin Arthur, but we all call him Crispin for short. The only problem is, you see... Anyway, oh, where was I? Oh, yes. The only problem is that Crispin is getting on in years and tends to be a bit forgetful. I don't know. This doesn't sound as if it would work. Oh, sure it would. Crispin is a very qualified wizard, one of the best. He just gets a little forgetful now and again, that's all. Now, where is it? Oh, I know I brought it with me. Aha! Here it is. What is that? Well, it is my opinion that you don't stand a chance against the likes of Mordak. Oh, excuse me for saying, Your Majesty, but you don't have a choice. You must come with me. I'm sure Crispin can help you. I've been carrying around. Ooh, it'll help you to fly. You can follow me to the land of Serenia, where Crispin and I live. It's much too far to walk, you know. Ooh, I think the fairy dust is still good. Like the fairy 
Adidas just wore off. Cedric, where have you been? I've been calling for you. Well, well, what have we here? A bit clumsy, are you? Well, come on in the house and dry off. No sense sitting around like a wet dog. Cedric, go into the house and pour each of us a nice hot cup of tea. Ooh, I like this one. The Society of Wizards has always taken a dim view of Mordak and his abuse of his power. Why he's even been put on suspension a few times. It never seems to do any good, though. Crispin, why would Mordak want to take my family or castle? What did we ever do to him? I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that. Mordak is a very unpredictable wizard. I've never understood that evil mind of his. Ooh. I thought perhaps you could help His Majesty Crispin. That's why I brought him here. Well, let me see now. I used to be a very powerful wizard at one time, you know. But I've gotten a little rusty lately. <laughs> a little rusty? That's quite enough from you, Cedric. I don't know what I have that would be of much use to you. Most of my wizard stuff is pretty old and worn out. But let's see what I can find. might work. Here, eat this. What is that? That's an old piece of magical white snake I had left over from last year. With it, you'll be able to communicate with the natural and animal world. You could find that quite helpful. Here's my old wand. I don't even know if it works anymore. Most of its power may be gone. You should know that wands are like pets. They've got to get to know you before they'll work for you. Just treat it with care and respect, and hopefully it will do something for you. You'd better get going, my boy. No telling what that confounded Morlack could be up to. You go with him, Cedric. Show him the way. Oh, me? Yes, you. Don't be such a coward. Now go on. You'd better get started. Thank you, sir. I appreciate all you've done for me. Ooh, I suggest we visit the town first. How about it, Your Majesty? Please don't call me Your Majesty, Cedric. It's much too formal. I'd like it if you'd just call me Graham. Oh, I'd be delighted to, Graham. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yes, the town. You might be able to find some supplies there. It's just over a little hill to the south, not too far. Well then, let's be on our way, Cedric. Graham, watch out! A poison a snake! <laughs> You're going! 
going into town. I'll just wait for you here. I had a nasty run-in with a big dog once, and I feel much safer out here. Inside the barrel, Graham sees an old, rotting fish. Graham leans way down into the barrel and removes, phew, the smelly old fish. May I help you, sir? Bending down, Graham quickly retrieves the silver coin from the street. How is your poor dear mother doing, William? Oh, she hasn't been doing too well lately. But my brother and I help out whenever we can. Thanks for asking, Amanda. Austin, keep your fingers out of that pie. The pies look lovely. I think I'll take one. Yes, they were just made fresh this morning. Here you go. Yes, this will be a fine dessert for our dinner tonight. Let's go home, Austin. Here's the last of the pies. Welcome to our bakehouse, Traveler. Of course, all of our wares are wonderful, but today we've got a special uncustard pies. Just one silver coin each, but take your time. Let me know when you're ready. Sir, I would like to purchase one of your custard pies. These pies cost one silver coin each. I've got it right here. Here you go. I hope you enjoy your custard pie. Oh, I'm sure I will. Ooh, watch out for the bear, Graham! I'm Queen Beatrice, kind sir. I wish to thank you ever so much for saving our hide from the claws of that horrible bear. In return, I offer you a luscious honeycomb from our hive. Please feel free to retrieve one. I promise my bees won't harm you. It may come in handy on your travels. Graham bends down and picks up the large stick from the ground. Graham reaches a hand into the beehive and retrieves a very sticky chunk of honeycomb. Wrapping it in a protective piece of cloth, he then pockets it. A bully of a dog terrorizes the poor ants as he playfully digs at their large anthill. <coughs> Allow me to introduce myself. I'm King Anthony the Great. May I ask who you are? Why, certainly. I'm King Graham of Daventry, and this is my friend, Cedric. We're seeking a way to cross the Great Mountains to the ocean on the other side. That is a very perilous undertaking. I wish you would reconsider. But if you shall not, in return for rescuing our home from that flea bitten cur, I wish to offer you our help, if for chance you may ever need it. Thank you very much, King Antony. Cedric and I appreciate your kind offer. We look forward to meeting you again. Graham watches with surprise as a contingent of ants marches into the haystack and begins to swarm through it.
see there was a way that we could be of help to you. Look here. We found the golden needle in the haystack. I'd like to present it to you. Perhaps you can find a use for it. Why, thank you, King Antony. I'm honored. Good luck in your travels, King Graham. And be careful. Nothing but a hot, dry desert for the West. Most people avoid it because there are bandits out there. Ooh, if you insist on going, I'll wait for you here. Life-giving water, nectar of the gods, Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. Uneasily, Graham reaches down and removes the old shoe from the desert sand. Life-giving water, nectar of the gods, Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. From across the desert sands, Graham can hear the sound of approaching hoofbeats. Open Sesame! Life-giving water, nectar of the gods, Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. Taking care to be very quiet, Graham reaches out and takes the staff into his possession. Ah, life-giving water, nectar of the gods, Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. Life-giving water, nectar of the gods, Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him.
Open Sesame! Oh no! The staff broke! Quickly, Graham grabs the old brass bottle. Bending down, Graham hurriedly picks up the gold coin from the temple floor. That was close! Ah, life-giving water, nectar of the gods. Graham can now feel strength and renewal flowing through him. I was just starting to get concerned. Don't worry about me, Cedric. I'm used to this kind of thing. Ooh, keep your eye on the gypsies, Graham. I don't trust them. You may see Madame Mushka now. Oh, you are here to see Madame Mushka? No? Well, come closer. Sit down. I will tell you your fortune. Already I can tell that you are on a quest of great urgency. We will see what we can find out for you. Look, Kingram. Look into the crystal ball. Look, Mananin. Look what I have for you. Take a good look at what you did to my brother, Alexander. Because of you, he's doomed to spend the rest of his days as a cat, and there's nothing I can do about it. But you can do something about it. Since you're the one that did this to him, you're the only one who can turn him back again. Back to the wizard Mananin. Alexander! I don't know how, Mordek. I'm not a wizard. I just happened to stumble across some magic spells and accidentally turned your brother into a cat. I didn't mean it. Please believe me, Mordek. I don't know how to turn him back into a wizard. You're holding out on me, little man. You're taking advantage of my good nature, but not for long. If I don't get a change of tune from you soon, I'll feed your family to the cat, starting with your dear mother. <laughs> Remember what I said. I'll only give you a little more time to decide before your family becomes cat food. That is all. But I see that your mission it's very dangerous indeed. I will give you something to help you. Here, where is it? It is a magic amulet. It will protect you against all but the most powerful magic. Good luck, King Ram. Be careful. That Mordek is a bad one. Thank you, Madam Mushka. The magic amulet begins to glow softly as Graham slips it over his head. He then carefully tucks the amulet into the front of his tunic, hiding it from sight. Come on, Cedric. There might be something important in here. Go, oh, if you want to. I'll wait here. To Graham's great relief, it appears that the witch's magic has been stopped by the amulet he is wearing. Just as Madame Mushka said it would. Now you spend the next 500 years in a bottle. Good. 
That old witch won't be seen here for a long time. But now, how to get out of this dreadful forest? A small leather pouch is tucked away in the drawer. Graham reaches the drawer and removes the leather pouch. Upon opening the leather pouch, Graham discovers three sparkling emeralds. A small intricate spinning wheel is put away in the trunk. Reaching a hand into the trunk, Graham retrieves the small spinning wheel. What's this? Why, it's a little key. Graham finds that the little key fits perfectly in this lock. Graham is charmed to find a little golden heart inside the door of the twisted old tree. Reaching into the little door of the tree, Graham extracts the little golden heart. Graham squeezes the honeycomb as hard as he can, which causes the honey to drip out of it onto the ground, creating a sticky little puddle at his feet. Now all that's left of the honeycomb is a piece of beeswax, which Graham puts back in his pocket. Why should I do that? What will you do for me? I'll show you the way out of the forest, if you let me go. How do I know I can trust you? I give you my word. An elf never breaks his word. Well, it's against my better judgment, but okay. Move over, Rocky. You're in our way. Sorry. Follow me! In here! Hey! Over here! I never take anything without giving in return. For your generosity in giving me those exquisite emeralds, I give you my finest pair of shoes. May they help you in your quest. Follow that passage over there. It's the way out of the dark forest. Thank you very much for all your help. I'm sure I'll be able to find a use for these fine shoes. not to want to venture in that dark forest, Cedric. I thought I'd never get out of there alive. My heart, you found it! I don't need this old thing anymore. Look at me, I'm a princess again! 
Herbert. Alicia. Where have you been all this time, my love? Oh, darling. Just take me home. I'll tell you on the way. Now, why would she toss aside this beautiful harp? Well, if she doesn't want it, I'll take it. Not seeing the tambourine's owner, Graham bends down and rescues it from the ground. Is that a new dance, Graham? The Bugaloo! Where did you get this? I thought I'd lost it. Oh, is it yours? I found it in the old witch's house in the dark forest. So that's where it got to. The old hag took it, eh? You know, this ain't an ordinary spinning wheel. It's not? Well, what's so special about it? Why, this spinning wheel can spin straw into gold, that's what. Except you gotta know who to use it. I doubt even the witch could figure that out. Thank you for bringing it back to me. Now wait, not so fast. How about that marionette? Don't you think the price of the spinning wheel is worth at least twice that of the puppet? I'd love to have it. Yeah, I guess so. Boy, give that marionette to the man here. I'll make you a new one. Come on, boy. Let's gather up some wood for a new puppet. Suddenly, frantic squeakings alert Graham to a mangy cat chasing a terrified rat. Take a look around if you want, but we don't have any shoes to sell you right now. We sold our last finished pair yesterday. Our business ain't doing so good anymore, and we're getting too old to keep trying. Is there anything I can do to help? There ain't nothing you can do, short of buying us out. But like I said, if you want to look around, Feel free. Okay, thanks. What have we here? Mama, take those shoes from the young man. Let me see them. These are the finest pair of shoes I've ever seen. The leather is soft and pliable, yet sturdy. The craftsmanship of these shoes are superb. And Mama, look at the solid gold buckle. Why, well, I could retire from the sale of these shoes. Then the shoes are yours. I don't think I could find a better use for them. You are a god, says young man. How can we ever repay you? You don't need to repay me. Just knowing I helped you is enough for me. Well, it ain't much, but it's all I've got to give. Here, take my cobbler's hammer. Perhaps you can find a use for it. Since I'll be retiring, I won't need it anymore, thanks to you. Why, thank you. A hammer could be very useful on my journey. 
Take care, young man. We'll never forget this. That's right, son. We'll finally be able to retire in comfort. You'll be in our hearts from now on. Come on, Mama, let's go home. Let's celebrate our good fortune. Come on in, look around. Let me know if you're interested in anything. Oh, did you get this wunderbar marionette? The craftsmanship is excellent. Well, I don't know if you'll believe me or not, but I got it from a little gnome. I must have it. Can I buy it from you? Actually, you may have it if you'll give me the sled in trade. Why, of course. But I must tell you, I think I'm getting the better deal. I, I can always make another sled. But finding another marionette of this quality... Ich weiß nicht. So, can I have the sled? Yeah, yeah, take it, it's yours. Thank you very much. I think I'll find this sled very useful. Well, you enjoy it and danke for the marionette. May I help you, sir? My golden needle! Wherever did you find it? It was in a haystack by the country inn. By the inn? Oh yes, I remember visiting there not long ago. Oh vulgar man, that innkeeper. He has no scruples at all. Well, I'm glad to see you've got your golden needle back. I wonder... Could you possibly see fit to give me that wonderful cloak in exchange for it? The cloak? Well, why not? It's yours. For the price of a golden needle. Thank you, kind sir. I'm sure it will help me on my travel. I'm sure it will. Good luck. Au revoir. job we pulled yesterday? Where's the rest of the loot, huh? I think one of you guys is holding out on me. Gentlemen, please excuse me. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Diana's full ain't got no more rooms. Hey boss, this guy looks like a real troublemaker. What do you want me to do with him? Rob him out. Struggle as he might. Graham could not escape his bonds. I told you I'd repay your kindness when you saved me from that horrible cat! Good luck, friends! Graham stoops down and picks up the sturdy rope from the stone floor. Using the cobbler's hammer, Graham pounds on the rusty padlock until it breaks apart. Inside the cupboard, Graham sees a large, juicy leg of lamb. Reaching into the open cupboard, Graham pulls out the savory leg of lamb. Finding the kitchen door locked, Graham unlocks it before going outside.
Be gone, you slithery varmint! Scat! A few hours later... Graham dons his warm cloak for protection against the freezing mountain air. Graham notices his stomach beginning to rumble with hunger from the exertion of the mountain climb. Oh, be careful, Graham! Graham notices his stomach beginning to rumble with hunger from the exertion of the mountain climb. Cedric! Graham finds the leg of lamb a bit tough, but tasty enough. Filling up quickly, he saves the other half for later. Drat! My sled is broken! Here, take this. Perhaps it will help you. You are a kind man to share your meager food with a poor bird, especially up here in these snowy mountains. Well, I couldn't just stand there and let you starve to death. What kind of person would I be? You have shown yourself to be a kind, compassionate man, and I will not forget what you did for me. Goodbye, dear friend. I am Queen Isabella and you have entered my domain now. I command you to kneel before me. Since both you and your friend over there have so thoughtlessly invaded my territory without my permission or knowledge, I have decided you shall both be put to death. Take him away, my pet. Wait, my pet. That was very lovely music. 
I've never heard anything quite that beautiful before. I think I felt my heart melting. Just a little bit. Just enough, that is. To allow you a chance for your freedom. A vicious Jenny has entered the area and taken up residence in my prized crystal cave. So far, I have been unable to extricate him from either the cave or my territory. If you can rid me of the Yeti, I will release both you and your owl friend, and you two can continue on your journey unhindered. You may rise now. I wish you luck in defeating the Yeti. If you succeed, you will have my undying gratitude. Go with him, Sir Grey Wolf. Show him the way to the Crystal Cave. You may go now. Sir Grey Wolf will lead the way. Yonder is the crystal cave. There you will find the yeti. So very gently, Graham hits the beautiful crystal several times with his hammer until it breaks loose in one piece. He then carefully places it among his other possessions. I see that the Yeti is dead. Queen Nicebella will be pleased. Come, follow me. Good. You have returned in victory, I presume. Yes, Your Majesty. The Yeti is dead. He will no longer be a scourge upon your realm. Are my friend and I free to go now? Yes. I keep my promises. I want to thank you for ridding my mountain domain of the horrible Yeti. Please rise, King Graham. Yes, I know who you are, and I have been informed of your quest. I do wish you luck against the wizard Mordak. You two may go. We wish you well on your difficult journey. Sir Grey Wolf will show you the way out of the mountain. Graham rescues a lovely golden locket from the leafy clutches of the rock's nest. Ah, uh, nice birdie. Good birdie. Ah, <laughs> uh, Gucci Gucci Goo. Hang on, I'll get you out of this. You'd never believe it, Cedric. You'd never believe it. Look, Graham, there's a boat here. Maybe we can use it.
Firmly, Graham wedges the softened piece of beeswax into the small hole in the boat's hull. Hopefully, the wax will hold and make her seaworthy. Come on, Cedric, get in the boat. Aye, aye, Captain. Yes, I think we should, Cedric. Oh, Graham, I don't like the looks of this. Me neither. Graham quickly bends down and rescues the fish hook from the ground. Graham! <coughs> Help me! Cedric, where do you hurt? Graham bends over and picks up the beautifully colored shell. I'm King Graham of Daventry, and I'm on a journey to find the wizard Mordax Island. But I seem to be stuck. I don't know where to go from here. Hey! What's that you say? What's this? Now what were you wanting? My owl friend is hurt. He was wounded by the harpies. Wounded by the harpies, did you say? We'll bring him on into the house. I'll fix him right up. Good as new. Lay him on the bed there. These poultices should fix the little fella up. Good as new. Ooh, I'm feeling better already. Tell me, what was in those poultices? My employer would be very interested in them. Hey! What was that? I said, what was in those poultices? My employer would be interested in them. Gifts from the sea, lad. Gifts from the sea. Ain't nothing special. You just gotta know how to use them. I don't think he'd find them particularly interesting. Now, son. What was it you were trying to tell me before? I was trying to find out where the wizard Mordax Island is. He kidnapped my family and is holding them hostage there. I must get to them before it's too late. Oh, I'm right sorry to hear about that. He's a nasty one, that Mordax. I wouldn't want to tangle with him. I tried to talk you out of going there, except I can see you can't leave your poor defenseless family unaided. I can enlist someone who can lead you straight to his island. Follow me outside.
Pearl, this man needs your help. He needs you to lead him to Mordax Island. It's a real emergency. Mordax holding his family hostage. Brace yourself, Cedric! Help me, I'm caught! Oh, help! Are you alright, Cedric? Well, let me see. Oh, I'm fine, Graham. Just a bit ruffled is all. Ugh, a dead fish. Well, maybe I can use it. Oh, I don't like this place. It's creepy. Cedric? See? This is a dead end. Let's go back now. No, I'll figure this out. into that dark hole. You don't know what's down there. Well, do you have any better ideas? No, uh, mind if I wait for you here? No, that's a good idea, Cedric. You be the lookout out here. But uh, yes, I'll be the lookout. Ooh, be careful, Graham. Graham reaches down and grabs the hairpin off the labyrinth floor. Graham inserts the hairpin into the door's large keyhole and discovers, to his amazement, that it fits perfectly. Turning it ever so gently, he soon hears a soft click, and the door is unlocked. Inside the cupboard, Graham's eyes fall upon a bag of dried peas. Reaching into the open cupboard, Graham retrieves the bag of dried peas. Did you find my gold locket? I thought it was gone for good. I lost it on the island just after I was brought here by Mordak. You wouldn't believe me even if I told you. But tell me, who are you and how did you come to be here? My name is Princess Cosima from the Kingdom of the Green Isles. My father, the king, employs a horrible wazir who befriended Mordak. When Mordak saw me, he immediately wished to marry me and bring me here. 
Naturally, I refused, and my father agreed with me. But our refusal angered him so much that he sold me here anyway and put me to work as a scullery girl. He says he will never let me go, that a scullery girl I will remain until I agree to marry him. But the thought revolts me. What am I to do? Don't worry. I'm here to save my family from the evil wizard. He's got them here someplace imprisoned inside a glass bottle. If I can manage to rescue them, then of course I wouldn't forget you either. I know the glass bottle you're talking about. It's in Mordak's laboratory upstairs. Keep quiet about my presence. Uh, I think this will be the most difficult part of my journey. I may not survive it. I would never give you away. And I will help you in any way I can, kind sir. Graham can see a small, moldy piece of cheese just inside the mouse hole. There, got it. The fish hook did the trick in retrieving the piece of cheese from the mouse hole. Princess Cosima, where did you come from? From the labyrinth. I spend a lot of time down here, you know, with my friends. Friends? Yes, like Zink and Sam. I don't know if you ever saw Sam or not. Anyway, I found this loose stone once that led here, to this cell. Now come on, you'd better get out of here. Hmm, this looks interesting. Graham wonders what the symbols mean. Graham tosses the moldy cheese into the machine's bubbling liquid.
Mordax wand now barely glows. Perhaps its power has weakened while Kristen's old wand now appears completely energized. What's going on here? I'll take care of you, you swine. Graham, I've heard from Crispin. What the? What have you done to my wand? You think you can outwit me, little man? Ha! Let me show you a thing or two. Why, you little... Smart, don't you? Well, I've got you now. Say goodbye, swine. So, is this is the way you want to play? Now why won't you work? Oh, Princess Cosima. Well, I did it. Mordak is dead. Dead? Are you sure? Maybe he's only trying to trick you. He's dead, all right. He turned himself into a fire and I put him out with rainwater. He'll never bother anyone else ever again. But now I have a bigger problem. I don't know what to do about my family or my castle. I don't know how to turn them back to normal. After all you've been through, there must be a way. Crispin! I have the solution to all your problems, Graham. While you and Cedric were gone, I did some asking around, and I found out that your son, Alexander, had the dubious distinction, if you may, of turning Mordak's brother, Mananan, into a cat some time back. Obviously, this deed angered Mordak, who could do nothing about it, since this particular spell could only be undone by the actual perpetrator, your son. It doesn't take a great genius to figure out that Mordak took your family and castle in revenge to try to persuade Alexander to restore Mananan back to his old self. I did discover, as now I see, that your castle and family were miniaturized and imprisoned inside a glass bottle. I did some research and found the spell for turning everything back to normal. Now watch! Hocus, Hocus, Aliopus!
colony! My children! My joy knows no limit! Oh, Father! I'm so glad you're here! Oh, Princess Cosima, how could I forget you? Come over here. Let me introduce you to my family. This is my wife, Queen Valenice, my daughter, Princess Rosella, and my son, Prince Alexander, who started this whole mess. All of you, this is Princess Cosima from the land of the Green Isles. Without her, None of us would be standing here now. She bravely saved my life. My lady, I am deeply in your debt, and I will make it up to you. With your permission, I'd like to travel to the land of the Green Isles to see you. All right, now that we've done with all the formalities, Let's get on with business, shall we? Higgledy! Higgledy! Poo! Be assured that your castle is right back where it belongs, and the right size, too. But now it's time that everyone return to their homes, with my help, of course. Alakazam! Alakazoo! Alaka! Wait! What about Cedric? Where is Cedric? Over there! Mordak may have killed him. Is there anything you can do about it? Hmm... Let me think. Ah, yes! I think I know! Abra... Abracabara? No, uh... Abracadora? Hmm. Now what is that confounded word? Oh, yes! Abracadabra! Oh, Cedric! Cedric, it sure is good to see you again. Oh, likewise, I'm sure. All right, enough is enough. Let's get on with it. Okay, Cosima, let's send you home first. Wasn't that the land of the Green Isle? Yes, that's right. I can't wait to see my parents again. Goodbye, Alexander. Perhaps we'll meet again. You can be sure of that, milady. Before you send us all home, Crispin, I just want to thank you for all your help. And you too, Cedric. I wouldn't be standing here with my family without you two. I'm deeply, deeply grateful. All in a day's work, my boy. All in a day's work. Right, Cedric? Right, Crispin. Okay, back home you go. Alakazam. Alakazoo. Alakazee. Well, there she is, our happy home, and we're all safe and sound once more. Let's go home, shall we? Yes, let's.